boiled leather. Boiled leather, often referred to by its French translation, queer buoy, was a historical material for various uses common in the Middle Ages and early modern period. It was leather that had been treated so that it became tough and rigid, as well as able to hold molded decoration. It was the usual material for the robust carrying cases that were made for important pieces of metalwork, instruments such as astrolabes, personal sets of cutlery, books, pens, and the like. It was used for some armor, being both much cheaper and much lighter than plate armor, but could not withstand a direct blow from a blade, nor a gunshot. Alternative names are molded leather and hardened leather. In the course of making the material it becomes very soft, and can be impressed into a mold to give it the desired shape and decoration, which most surviving examples have. Pieces such as chests and coffers also usually have a wooden inner core. Various recipes for making queer bouillie survive, and do not agree with each other, probably there were a range of recipes, partly reflecting different final uses. Vegetable tan leather is generally specified. Scholars have debated the subject at length and attempted to recreate the historical material. Many, but not all, sources agree that actual boiling of the leather was not part of the process, but immersion in water, cold or hot, was. Queer bouillie was used for cheap and light armor, although it was much less effective than plate armor, which was extremely expensive and too heavy for much to be worn by infantry. However, queer bouillie could be reinforced against slashing blows by the addition of metal bands or strips. Especially in helmets. Modern experiments on simple queer bouillie have shown that it can reduce the depth of a narrow wound considerably, especially if coated with a crushed mineral facing mixed with glue, as one medieval layer of author recommended. In addition, armor based on hide has the unique advantage that it can, in extremis, provide some nutrition. When actually boiled. Josephus records that the Jewish defenders in the siege of Jerusalem in AD 70 were reduced to eating their shields and other leather kit as was the Spanish expedition of Tristan de Luna in 1559. Versions of queer bouillie were used since ancient times, especially for shields, in many parts of the world. Although in general leather does not survive long burial, and excavated archaeological evidence for it is rare, an Irish shield of queer bouillie with wooden formers, deposited in a peat bog, has survived for some 2,500 years. It was commonly used in the Western world for helmets, the Pekelhaube, the standard German helmet was not replaced by a steel Stahl helm until 1916, in the midst of World War I. As leather does not conduct heat the way metal does, firemen continue to use boiled leather helmets until World War II, and the invention of strong plastics. The word cuirass for a breastplate indicates that these were originally made of leather. In the late Middle Ages, the heyday of plate armor, queer bouillie continued to be used even by the rich for horse armor and often for tournament armor as well as by ordinary infantry soldiers. Tournaments were increasingly regulated in order to reduce the risk to life, and in 1278 Edward I of England organized one in Windsor Great Park at which queer bouillie armor was worn, and the king provided swords made of whalebone and parchment. The account of the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 by Jean de Waverin, who was present on the French side, describes the crucial force of English longbowmen as shaving on their heads either queer bouillie helmets, or wicker with iron strips, or nothing. The last, he says, were also barefoot. A few pieces of Roman horse armor in queer bouillie have been excavated. Evidence from documents such as inventories show that it was common in the late Middle Ages and Renaissance, and used by the highest ranks, but survivals are very few. In 1547 the Master of Armory in the Tower of London ordered 46 sets of barts and crinets in preparation for the final invasion of Scotland in the war known as the Rough Wooing. In September that year the English cavalry were crucial in the decisive victory at the Battle of Pinky Kluge. The German Count Palatine of the Rhine had six sets of queer bouillie horse armor for his and his family Seuss in the 16th century. Often the chaffron for the horse's head would be in steel, though leather ones are also known. Queer bouillie was also very common for scabbards. However surviving specimens of leather armor are rare more so than the various types of civilian containers. It is believed that many leather pieces are depicted in sculpted tomb monuments, where they are more highly decorated than metal pieces would have been. Queer bouillie was also often used for elaborate figurative crests on some helmets. The material is mentioned in Frosar's Chronicles of the Hundred Years' War, and Geoffrey Chaucer, in his Canterbury Tales, written in the late 1300s, says of the knight Sir Topaz, note, Jamo are greaves, shin armor. The large decorative crests that came to top some helmets in the late Middle Ages were often made of queer buoy, 
as is the famous example belonging to the Black Prince and hung with other achievements over his tomb in Canterbury Cathedral. His wooden shield also has the heraldic animals applicate in Gwerbuyi, as well as the crests on helmets described above. Gwerbuyi was probably used sculpturally in various contexts, over a wood or plaster framework where necessary. When Henry V of England died in France, his effigy in Gwerbuyi was placed on top of his coffin for the journey back to England. A near life size crucifix in the Vatican Museums is in Queer Bouilly over wood. This is of special interest to art historians because it was made in 1540 as a replica of a crucifix in silver presented by Charlemagne some 740 years before. An object of great interest is possibly the first of the long line of monumental crucifixes in Western art. In 1540, the original silver was melted down for church plate to replace that looted in the sack of Rome in 1527. It seems likely that the leather was molded directly from the original, and it is possible that the wooden core underneath is actually the Carolingian original, with the leather replacing the sheets of silver originally fitted over the wood. Queer Bouilly has also been employed to bind books, mainly between the 9th and 14th centuries. Other uses include high boots for especially tough use, which were called postillion's boots in England. Another use was for large bottles or jugs called blackjacks, bombards or costerns. There is an English reference to these from 1373. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.